<laughs> uh, I mean, I'm I'm fading here. We we, we talked about the it's Dutch tough. East India Company. Uh, did I miss an empire? I guess I didn't really talk about the French Empire. People forget about the French. It's That's true. true. It's not as they it's would. not as sexy um, in like our in my yeah. memory of history. You don't find the French to be sexy. They weren't just making cheese. They had they had galley slaves rowing their boats and Jack Shafto. Uh, yeah, slaves in the sugarcane plantations out in the West Indies. But the uh, they actually they had the, the monopoly on this porcelain empire. Well, it was an empire of imported. Hey, everyone. This is Joe from Thunk Tank Podcast, and thanks for joining us here today on our episode all about colonization. So if you, this is a topic that you're at all interested in, I think you'll have a good time listening through. And we talk all about the history of colonization and really trying to just discuss and ask questions and explore how we as a human species have gotten to where we are today in the 21st century as modern humans for better and worse. So yeah, it's just a, a really interesting discussion. I think we'll have more to come. We're going to do a second part on the future of colonization, talking about space exploration, which, you know, is a little science fiction still at the moment, but it's it's coming. We're, we've taken steps. So I, I think it's it's a topic worth discussing further. So if you have any thoughts or comments, you know, please share those with us. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, uh, let us know as well. And check out our YouTube channel as well. We're doing a lot of great extras on there too. We've started some Age of Empires history extras as well as some other videos that we've done and we hope to have more soon. So yeah, give us a uh, view on there too if you uh, have the chance. And hope you enjoy this one. We will see you in the tank. Attention humans, this is a thunk tank. Please insert this podcast directly into your nearest orifice for viewing pleasure. Okay, you ready? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Welcome, come into our, come into our Thunk Tank. <laughs> Luke, don't switch <laughs> to the other peanuts. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Come in the tank. <laughs> We're thinking, and we're thinking, <laughs> and we're thunked. <laughs> oh my god, I'm probably more beer than man if we go far enough back at this point. Fair enough. In three, uh, one, two, four, uh, we're going. <laughs> we're live. Yeah. Our countdowns are so never consistent. Yeah. That's a standard countdown, though. Welcome. Uh, Thunk Tank Podcast is live in right now but it's not live <laughs> how you're hearing it well they don't know that mm. actually they definitely know it yeah um johnny you just what why don't we start with like what you brewed today because that's like cool all right so uh this is uh the roll call part of the podcast where yeah we let's talk go about that. beer stuff i guess yeah i love yeah. it wait we should we uh, should set up like in the episode notes like if you hate beer skip to minute six thirty or something or we the whole podcast. That. Or, yeah, skip to... <laughs> <laughs> we have that, the beer stuff out right at the yeah. top. We have that on uh, on YouTube, but we could do it in the description for this, too, yeah? That would be yeah, funny, so, right? Just skip yeah. to the end and go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that would be what we mean. <laughs> so I might be a little slow tonight. I'm going to try, but I just had bad insomnia, so I started brewing at, like, 6 a.m., which... That's dedication, uh, I, I'm baby. i 10 most nights, so that's crazy. That's usually, I go to bed a few hours before that, usually, you're like, but... Uh, you're like Da Vinci of beer. It's fine. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I made a uh, a smoked porter, nice. uh, a smoked robust porter specifically. So it's going to be about seven percent alcohol. Hopefully, a nice rich body, a little roasty flavor to it. Does that and, smell uh, very different when you're making it? Oh yeah, because you use smoked malt, where they actually like kill the malt with uh, with like a wood smoke instead of a natural gas smoke or something, you know, cleaner. Yeah. And uh, you taste it, and that's you know, cool. You think about it, all beer used to yeah. be smoked, just because that's how you heated a thing. Everything was smoked if you wanted it to be dry. You know. Uh, Speaking of, we got to do our beer history episode. Like we've been teasing that, enough, we've friend. been teasing it's that coming. since July, I think. <laughs> I got, I got people, I got people coming over. Don't worry, I got um, dates. Nice. I'll announce them when they're more solid. But uh, nice. Yeah, so I made a smoked porter. And uh, really excited for it. I also kegged a hazy IPA I made a couple weeks ago. So today nice. was a big beer day. 
And right now I'm drinking a, a Hide and Despot Imperial Spout. Stout. Oh, Imperial. From Licking Hole Clever. Creek Craft Brewery. God, that's Land, a name. Virginia. Licking Hole? That? Yeah, Licking can... Hole Creek Craft Brewery in Goochland, Virginia. Oh, my God. At least it's not <laughs> Licking Hole Crack. That's a real place. Goochland is a real place. Goochland. And the brewery there is called Licking Hole. I yep. wonder if that comes from a different language because nobody would name something Goochland. Yeah, it's like one of those maybe, maybe translations Jimmy... that kind of just happened. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe Jimmy Gooch settled there. He, you know, <laughs> Jimmy, he's Jimmy, trying, to, Jimmy he's the trying Gooch. to outrun some bankers, and that's where he built his cabin and had 18 kids. And good old Jimmy Gooch. Gooch. Yeah, Jimmy Gooch. Yeah, you never know. But uh, getting it done. Yeah, it's a uh, it's an imperial stout that was aged for nine months in Kentucky bourbon barrels, but it's a 23 year old Kentucky bourbon barrel, so it's got like crazy, weird like fruit woodness. I don't know how to describe it. It's a really sounds pretty intense. heavy. What what percent is that? Uh, 11.3. Whoa, good luck, yeah. buddy. So that's going to get you going. Uh, that's that's what you call proper Thunk Tank fuel. Yeah, that's that's class yeah, grade last A. The whole episode. Yeah, it's like in Thunk Tank fuel, you have like the stout fuel, which yeah. is like the premium gas at the gas station. Yeah. And then you have like when we switch to Miller Lights in the drunk tanks, that's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. It's just liquid oxygen. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah, that's that just is. like. To get you to that next level of orbit. Just keep, yeah. keep your blood fizzing. Like, yeah. <laughs> keep, it, keep it going. Keep it popping, you know? Yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's the <laughs> beauty of Miller Light for you. That sounds, that sounds pretty good. You, you got a, a lot, of, lot of stuff going on over there. That's awesome. I, today was a big beer day. And then I, I went to a brewery for dinner where I talked to Kara and some other people about beer. So I've done about 14 out, 13 hours of beer today. And it's all uh, professional development. Look at that. Sure. Yeah, yeah it's tax-deductible right brewery yeah. visits. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> you got to write, uh, write that off. I deduct going to concerts and like the gas costs and the mileage and all that shit. You probably don't yeah, want to say that. It's not called the MATF <laughs> because no one cares about music, Luke. So. Yeah. That's true. That That's true. When it comes up in the IRS files, however that works, and they see all these write-offs for music, they're like, ooh, an artist. And when, then when they see it for beer, they're like, well, I guess that's the one we're auditing. Yeah, week, yeah. You yeah. Know? Should we audit the that's trumpet cool. player or the beer maker? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, from, so we're drinking yeah. uh, Treehouse <laughs> again. Yeah, we've climbed back up into the Treehouse. I tree went up house. to uh, Massachusetts. Ooh. up uh, Loving it. In- initially, uh, I mean, eventually up to Boston for Thanksgiving. But on the way, I stopped at Treehouse the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, Treehouse historically releases something special like the day or two before Thanksgiving. This this year it was two of their stouts. Um, we're not having those now, but the stouts were. Uh, I guess I only had existence the other night. Yeah, and we then only they tried released a new one, one of them. Yeah, called per- Hedonic Rituals, something like that. Oh wait, which one was p- a, a permanence? Is that impermanence? Impermanence. That's okay. what we had the other night. That's the one that we yeah, had. Yeah, okay. which was delicious. It was that was pretty I, pretty great. I, I did mean to say that the brewer, yeah, I love Treehouse, but the brewery Licking Hole Creek, even though it's a silly name and a silly sounding place, really good brewery from the beers I've had. They, and mm. just they have funny names for their beers. But hey, that's the, fine. the three yeah. or four I've had from them were all great. Yeah, the beer will uh, stand on its own. We should make more of an sure. effort to like, I mean, it's hard to find them when you live in one place. Yeah. But to, to get like weird, cool new breweries that no, no one's. Like, top, you know, that's well, not there's a, there's super a, popular, let's yeah. say. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them that you can get at a beverage store, but whether or not, I, I mean, a lot of it is kind of like, ah, eh, it's pretty good. It's all right. But I mean, even smaller things, like I think most people have not heard of Tilted Barn in, in uh, but Rhode Tilted, Island. But Tilted Barn is killing. Well, I mean, they're making so killing good. beer, but they're so small that, like, right. it's not getting around, you know? But that's the problem. We can't. We, we I mean, no, hyper local is where it's going. It, it's, it's that's a good thing because it's just yeah. going to fuel the beer tourism because people are going to travel to try beers rather mm-hmm. than demand it show up at their place and a middleman yeah. take sixty well, percent cut. It, it also puts, exactly. it also puts a dent in you know Budweiser trying to buy everybody up. Not because, so much. No, but I mean, like if people are willing to still go to places and spend money that's that aren't owned by like larger places, that's a good thing. Yeah, ultimately, I think the quality will stay better that way. Well, because you have to st- keep competing. Yeah. Yeah, that makes And yeah. it's even hard for, for us to get Tilted Barn, for example, because they're so small that they release once a week on Friday, 
at like you know 5 p.m. they open and it's Don't like, they have like you, a Fisher Price cash register too. Yeah, they, their cash register is like a Fisher Price like that's kid awesome. kid cash register. Do they give them monopoly? Change? That's that's a little too <laughs> hipster, you know. It's like if you go that's to Williamsburg. Now you're you just see, showing off how hipster you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something commercial grade can handle the workload. Exactly. If your price register breaks, I'm gonna have a lot less patience for you than if it's like a Brinks brand. I know for register, and I know, you know for sure that Fisher Price does not take Discover. I know. How far could fact. you stretch that? Like, what if they were preparing sure. grilled cheese on those kid kitchens that they make, the little tikes or whatever? Yeah, exactly. Or, or like we bake uh, everything easy bake oven bulbs in our yeah in our uh, retrofied <laughs> easy bake oven. Yeah. They're actually uh, gas ovens that we turned into easy bake oven. Yeah, much much. More local. All of our eggs are heated um, on individual nests. And the other thing I did while in Massachusetts is, uh, luckily, the day I was going up there, like or the day before, rather, um, weed officially went on sale. Of course, I bought it there and consumed it there, and then later... Well, I think you should save all this for our travel episode, because you're going off to far-off lands with all these crazy different laws. <laughs> Which we are going to, as per the topic um, of the episode. But, but. if you're ever going to visit Massachusetts, that's... Uh, an extra reason to to go check out their recreational marijuana uh, system. The wonderful state of, what are we I mean, about? if you're into that kind of thing, and of course, finish all your products before you cross state lines. Um, Is that what they say to do? I mean, that's what also, you have to do careful. legally. Some jobs, oh, I know nothing some about jobs this. So. Specifically, are you can't you can't smoke marijuana and work here. Not you can't smoke it. Like as long unless it's legal wherever you are. Like some place would be like, oh, you went to Amsterdam and did it there where it's legal, or Colorado. Yeah, you still can't work here. So right, right. Check with your employer if you're worried about that. That's a good point. Yeah. Or, uh, or if you I'm can sure get yourself out of a job that's preventing you from smoking weed simply because they don't allow it, <laughs> consider getting a different job if you can. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, career advice by Luke. <laughs> by Luke on Lesson Talk one. Podcast. Don't How to structure to your Luke. career around marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> can you please get the textbook going? Um, I, can you start writing? <laughs> I guess. Uh, all right. That's a bit, that's about it with the beer. Right, we'll we'll so, chirp it. Wait, we didn't say what name of the beer we're drinking. Oh, I think we're on Alter Ego. We're um, starting so with. Alter Ego is a guys, beer. You drink Treehouse every week. I mean, it doesn't matter. Not really. It's been, it's been like three bro. months since we've had it. This beer is He's called uh, 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 Alter Ego because it's, um, I guess, dry hopped one extra A before the Alter Ego or something. No. Uh, okay. Check out the description if you want, but I don't have it in front of me. If you ever see a can of Treehouse, uh, you should try it. I mean, check the can date, but try it. They hold up really well. Yeah, it's really good beer. Um, unlike San City, whose beers age really quickly. So, yeah, I mean, you're playing that game with a lot of types of IPA sometimes. Well, don't so. don't try it unless that's your style. There's some people that hate hops, and they'll be convinced they true. don't like beer. If you so, hate American true. IPAs or anything in that juicy New England IPA world, then don't try Treehouse. But well, they, try, their try their stouts. Now. Yeah, yeah, try their stouts. Yeah, which are also killing. Um, so, I'm, yeah. I like a nice West Coast now and then. but Oh, I love a nice West Coast. Anyways, on to the topic. We're, what, 20 minutes in? Let's start this episode. <laughs> no, we're right. Oh, 10. All right. So, um, <laughs> hello, going, all you on, people that skipped ahead of the beer talk. We'll... Uh, You've just skipped some uh, riveting beer discussion, and now on to colonization. Yeah, Luke took his shirt off. It was really weird. Um, my nipples were sweating. I, he was excited for colonization. What can uh, I say? It happens. So I, I jotted down some general things that I, I'll either reference or not about colonization. And by that, you mean a psychotic notepad full of pencils. How is it psychotic? What is a notepad supposed to oh, look oh, like? Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Legal Pad with his post-it notes doesn't seem so crazy now. Huh? Let me tell you this. If you... <laughs> yeah, if you if you get yourself a, a, a legal notepad yeah. like this yeah. and start writing like down changes. ideas, it changes things. You just remember yeah, more I, shit. Look, I want tiny. I have a tiny one this oh, week. Oh, so. the tiny one's good, too, because you can keep it in your pocket. Yeah, I took it to the bar. It helped. Or the brewery. That's not a bad idea. I need to this do more This is a little big. People can look over my shoulder and read what I'm doing. Yeah, see, that I, I'm not so sure about. I can about, fold but. this shit over and shove it in a pocket. Anyways, no one cares about this part. Let's get to the episode. <laughs> yeah. You're fucking rotating. Uh, so I think, Johnny, you were the one that was pushing uh, us to do it. Yeah, so give us, give us a little intro on where you want this to land kind of thing. So I, uh, I had wanted to do colonization as the idea of, you know, just an organism – point really societal and historical but the idea that an organism just grows within its environment enough to a point where it can 
not just sustain, but branch out and try to spread itself in a different foreign environment. Like I've always found that cool, but researching for the episode, colonization, colonialism, very specific meanings. Uh, and so we're going to kind of just zero in on those. Cause I also find those fascinating and just this is the definition that, um, this is, I, I always thought the, the ecology, uh, definition as the main one uh the action by a plant or animal of establishing itself in an area like that idea of to colonize something that's the third definition the the first one when you search it is the action or process of settling among and establishing control over the indigenous people of an area and historically that's pretty much colonization has been uh so we're going to pretty much focus on, on western europe uh unfortunately history just really means like academic history means Western history. Sorry, it's just a thing. It's where the uh, academies are started. It's just, so. And I grew up in it, and that's the stuff I learned and I find interesting. And those are the first global empires, the age of uh, colonization, exploration, age of sail. We're talking 1400s, <laughs> late 1400s, up through the 20th century with you know all our crazy bullshit we've come up with since. But uh, just talking about that idea that we have whole continents and nations and cultures that are existing that, you know, in a lot of, in a lot of situations, it was kind of one guy calling the shots cause you know, he wanted more gold for his shitty, you know, mistress or, you know, the King needed this, like that. When you look back at the re Oh shit. Did I cut out? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> 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 no. So, John, we lost Johnny at the moment. We lost moment. Johnny. Should we keep this rolling? Or I, I, I I'll call you back. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of in, enjoying his utter freak out. Should, should we leave this in there? Absolutely. I'm pretty sure we will. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, I just watched Johnny's brain explode as he realized that. I think he's got he he's got one recording. of those wiggly USB cords. Yeah, that's what it looked like. He wiggled it for a moment, and it, it seemed to come back. But. So he mentioned the the definition of like a plant or an animal or even yeah. a bacteria. Like a bacteria will colonize your throat in strep throat or something like that, right? Is that a medical term? No, I just mean like I've heard bacteria colonies, right? Yeah, right. Or like what is a colony? It's something that has colonies, colonized like bee somewhere. Co bee colonies. Yeah, exactly. Those types um, of things. So yeah. animals can can do Dr that kind of thing. Colony. And so one one angle would be colony. to say, you know, it's it's very let's say natural to want to define our behavior as something different than what you see in nature with plants or animals. But I would also and and it's true that we are pretty different than most of what we see mm -hmm. in nature, right? Well, that's our whole thing. Even our closest relative, the yeah. chimpanzee, we're quite different from them, but we're also pretty similar. So I guess it's just not surprising that that our version of colonization is actually not too far off from. Well, I think if you go back, I'm not sure because I tried to look up um, not just definitions, but the etymologies, like the histories behind the definitions. Yeah. Um, were you able to find anything earlier? Because I could only find Latin. Well, I could only find, uh, like, Colombian era references. Like, the earliest references I could find were, like, the 1500s. Oh, for, for let's say, colonialism. No, for, like, the, the word colonize. Oh, when that word existed. Yeah. I see. Yeah, what did I write down? Um, derived from the Latin word colere, which means colere. to inhabit. Okay, so there's, a, there's a, an actual Latin root. Along the, these lines but of just... But, of course, people were inhabiting places right. for the millions of years of us existing. But that's their version of inhabit, not colonizing. Like, my question is, in, in Latin times or Roman times, then, like, what was the the term for colonization? Like, was it that, or is that just... I don't know exactly. Yeah. I mean, we obviously... Our, our linguist fans, if you could get on this and uh, tweet at us. Words and, and definitions always, like change right no because i see what you're saying it's interesting this idea that we kind of appropriate it to our own behavior maybe but i'm not sure exactly like where that root like um definition crossed over or like one that was necessarily because you would think even in ancient times they would have had they would that idea would have existed like they had colonies like of course yeah ancient greece was colonizing yeah all over the place yeah um, all over the mediterranean often the, you know 
okay, so whatever word we had for people um, indigenous to America, they had, you know, their term for essentially a barbarian who who was occupying land. But, you know, I think a lot of the attitudes were, well, if you're not, you know, settling on that land and farming that land, then go fuck yourselves. We're going to do that, you know? Yeah, and there's a lot of confusion, too. I saw this really cool lecture online um, and he was talking about the great collapses throughout history. And there's the, the Roman Empire, obviously, is probably the most well-known one. There's then – and when he says, like, collapses, he's referring to of Western civilization yeah. uh, specifically. You know, obviously, you have collapses all over the place all the time. But in terms of, like, the Western culture and, and that narrative, um, there's ancient Rome. And then before that was – or I think it was between this and the other one, there was when – Greek ha- Greece, ancient Greece had its own dark ages for a few hundred years. And then there was another one, I think an earlier one, and they don't know quite what caused it. Like that's what, one of the ones where they're like, yeah, there's just not enough data. And in fact, one of the causes were these invasions by these people who were floating around on the Mediterranean and they just called them the sea peoples. And nobody knows like what actual civilization they were. Right. They're just known vaguely in like, a couple of records as like, oh yeah, and the sea people showed up again. And now, are those people that like live at sea? You know what I mean? Well, that's one of the questions. Like they've tried to figure out like, well, what actual tribes would those people have come from? And they've narrowed it down to several, but they still don't have a clear idea on on who those people actually were. I see. But you can't colonize them. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You can't colonize. What are you going to do? Take our water? Here comes J-Bone. Johnny boy, back in business. Johnny. How you doing, bud? Oh, no. He looks distraught. God damn it. I don't hear anything. What the fuck? Uh, we well, hear you. You, we... Can't, you can't hear us? We hear you. Uh, I hear you now. Okay. All right. We're giving you a thumbs up. I had to uh, I had to stop and recover the file, so I have to start a new file. That's fine. I always have a backup going. All right. I just started re-recording. Word. Re-recording. That's All hard right. To well, say. I'm full of rage, so. So do you want to, do you want to take it out on on? Uh... Take a big gulp of your uh, uh, beer while we continue, and you can chime in when uh, you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Go Fair ahead. enough. So we basically uh, we were talking about like the the um, sort of origin of the word to colonize, and right. Johnny mentioned there was two other like primary definitions of colonization, which were specifically to humans and like humans, you know, I don't know. Um, let's say in, in a pejorative sense, like taking over or, you know, just stealing land, that kind of idea. Yeah. But there's also just the look at nature and you can see plants and animals and bacteria and anything else just yeah. doing what life does, which is try to spread and try to be, you know, successful from an evolutionary perspective. Yeah. It's kind of interesting how it's sort of a very similar action just on obviously a different strata where you were saying how, we like to think of ourselves as different from animals because we're we're peoples. That's what we've done with every every way that we try to classify ourselves as different. So having a different definition or kind of like an addendum almost to that definition where it's like, well, you have to displace certain people or something like that. It's like, well, that was kind of implied in the original definition in, in terms of how maybe animals or other creatures did it maybe. I don't know. I mean, you can imagine if when the European settlers first arrived in America – you know, an alternate version of history where there was no land bridge between Siberia and, um, you know, Alaska and it, where humans never migrated towards North America. Yeah. Um, they would have just found bears and, and birds and animals. Beats. beats. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Actually, they would have found, you know what they would have found then? They would have found camels. Because I, I know the camel originated in North America. Yeah, there were mad camels apparently, and then the Native Americans. Then we drank all the camel milk. And, yeah, and and then that's history. <laughs> so there's definitely a distinction between um, colonization, just generally, yeah. and colonialism. Yeah. Well, that becomes. Uh, yeah, that's actually a really interesting point too. Because I mean, we'll talk about both. But... Yeah, because even when we mentioned like bee colonies earlier, it's like. When I think of a bee colony, I think of somebody setting up a bunch of those things and putting bees in them, and then there are more bees, and it's like, Bzzz. well, yeah, that's not necessarily displacing anybody, but just the action of going there and changing the environment, you're displacing something that, that was already there. Ecological yeah. niche of the some kind. The balance changes, yeah. yeah. So it, it's a little more, yeah. more overt with humans where it's like, all right, well, there's pretty much somebody everywhere if you're going to go exploit it for resources. So by doing that, you have to then displace people or... 
or kill them. Well, so, the combination of things usually, right? Yeah. 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 That, that's good. Let's can I jump in? Yeah. Uh, dive in, baby. Let's, uh, let's like set the stage for because because when we think back to the fourteen hundred and ninety two. Columbus sailed the, the Pacific blue. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Uh, close. <laughs> but, you know, we think about, like, uh, you know, the Europeans are just going out and attacking these poor, happy savages that, you know, they had loincloths, <laughs> but they had each other kind of thing. And then they brought smallpox and greed and money, and it ruined everything. And, yeah, yeah that's true in a lot of respects. But It's uh, not the whole story. Just because the, the history is taught from a Western-centric point of view. Yeah. Just naturally, yeah. Quick overview: cover the continents, North, South America. Lots of indigenous people spread out. You know, permanent, nomadic, all that stuff. Very sparsely populated, though. We all know how that went. Then you had Africa was really populated. You had complex uh, uh, societies and cultures, so it was really hard to. You couldn't just attack them with swords and spears. They had their own swords and spears and metallurgy and culture, and so it was hard to just impose your will there. And Africa was also gigantic compared to Europe. Uh, yeah, Asia a lot was bigger than people think. The, yeah, a- Asia was arguably the cultural center of the world and the biomass center, and so they really weren't interested in what you know the people on the periphery were trying to do. Uh, and then the, the rest is kind of ocean, right? Well, there's so there's uh, Aust- or the yeah South Pacific too. Yeah, that's what I, mean. I said kind of ocean. Like, yeah. You, you mean like oh, okay. um, yeah, but they, they Vietnam they, and stuff. Yeah, South Pacific, but also also like Oceania, like Australia, um, New Zealand, all those islands over there. Yeah, no, I mean I kind of included them in with Asia, yeah. like Thailand, Cambodia. They like you know Ang- uh, Angkor Wat or whatever that Ang- Angkor Wat. Yeah. The, uh, there's like temples in, in Southeast Asia that are huge and whatever. They had a culture. But uh, so the Europe was full of people. After the Black Death, people started repopulating. So cities started booming. New technology and stuff caused a bigger boom. Uh, and sailing became like the like Europeans were kind of shitty compared to the rest of the world technology wise. For from from the fall of Rome on, probably like uh, up so, until the Renaissance, right? Yeah. So one of the big things that they jumped ahead of everyone else in was shipbuilding, mm-hmm. uh, and that yeah. that that mixed with a lot of uh, competition and just you know overcrowding and shit in Europe caused for these small countries, relatively small countries, to just launch into these global empirical campaigns. Uh, yeah, so I had the it's definition kind of, kind of, of colonialism uh, specifically. It, maybe it can even just go under the umbrella of colonization, but colonialism as the project of European political domination that ended with liberation movements in the 1960s, more or less. Um, yeah. Whereas colonization, right. you could you could go back to you know choose any empire you want from uh, history, and you can find examples of them. Um, first, you know, going to war with a neighboring yeah. land, taking, winning, taking over, and colonizing. Whether that yeah. means uh, mass migration of people, whether that means just economically well, that's taking how empire supplies. Works. Yeah, even in that's why I mentioned the um, the uh, South Pacific Islands. I forget the name of the islands, but there was one where they actually developed uh, what uh, I was reading in. Uh, did you read Guns, Germs, and Steel, Johnny? Uh, yeah, back in high school. Yes. I mean, it's so good, but he was talking about how he, he considers what they were able to do was create um, almost like a proto-empire where they didn't quite have all the components because they were on islands in the South Pacific. Um, but they were still going through some of the processes that you would see in, in any other sort of uh, imperial system where you know they, they go to places, they take it over, they establish you know their influence, and then they accept trade and tribute and that sort of thing. So it's kind of, yeah. So it, it, it happens yeah. all over. Yeah. The only reason I was focusing on Western Europe's colonial era is because it, it, I think it, when you look well, at it, it it's really what's shaped the modern world, you know, yeah. well, it's what won. Than, yeah. Because you look at, 
I mean, look at Central America, like a lot of or, or South America, all these countries and these different culture competing cultures. And it's like the people there, when you think about it, they don't identify with the people that have lived there for hundreds of thousands of years, like other parts of the world, like Greece or China. They're identifying with mostly like their Spanish American identity, which is only a few hundred years old. So, uh, like when you, and, and just the way like capitalism and so, all right, let's just dive into this. So, there's there's <laughs> a few it. big empires I want to focus on. He's waving the this notepad, Luke. Sound. <laughs> what? You're, I told Luke you're waving the notepad. He's ready. He's diving <laughs> in. I, I, I'm not trying to just lecture about history, but I just want to when we get to a cool point, let's That's just exactly talk what about I say that. in class. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so we all know. Yeah. And most of this we should if any of you paid attention to seventh, ninth or eleventh grade or whatever it is in your state, uh, they teach all this over and over. Just He's such a good angry complex. teacher. They do. But the thing is, people do forget. So like, don't but people forget. So don't leave out any I, details because like I, I could use a reminder. Um, I mean, Johnny, I think you're the type of brain that the historical facts stuck more from high school and my you. brain, the science facts tend tended to stick more i like turtles so so i also like turtles though yeah uh <laughs> right, go so ahead teach imperialism and co- uh, co- uh, colonialism the two big ones we think of are spain and england right yeah yeah if, if i had to pick the two big ones it'd be spain had so, the first one in america i think and england had the biggest really, one por- yeah. portugal had the first real empire they they were they made some real seafaring advances because they were a smaller country. Spain was the bigger one, so they had to look to the sea. Mm-hmm. Uh, necessity is what pushes most of these horrible decisions that people make throughout history, by the way. Also, I'll out. link a video in the description uh, just to segue very briefly. I saw a really interesting um, video, and it was all about um, incest and inbreeding and how so many of the monarchs and the monarchy families throughout European history, really, leading up to basically the end of World War One, when all that shit kind of fell apart, they were all severely in red. Oh, they were all hemophiliacs. Yeah, so the people calling these shots were just fucked up. Not the most clear-minded folk. No, like like messed up in, in various later, ways. Yeah. This is, this is earlier. But I'm just saying Part it's, of what, it's in there. Yeah, and we'll get into what caused that was there was so much business interest tied in yeah. that you just had to make sure it worked and family ties were a good Gotta marry your call. sister, bro. It's good. Sometimes it just it made sense money wise, dollars and cents wise. I, I didn't live there. Have fun with that but, cleft uh, mallet, yeah. <laughs> but so Half the Portuguese foot. they invented the caravel, which I'm not going to get into shipbuilding. We'll do that another episode. But it's uh it's it's a type of ship that made it they could sail way further than anyone. So they went to farther. Africa, India, Asia. They brought ship back ship back from Asia on a boat in a tenth of the Amazing time. Amazing how yeah. novel that must have been at the time. That's like going to Mars to get like space cinnamon right now. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> like that's so bad. Yo, dude, this yeah. ice cream's delicious. What's yeah. your secret? Space cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, how'd you get there? It's like eh, it took like two years and half of us died. Sounds like going to Mars, right? Yeah. Yeah, but check this shit out. Yeah, it costs <laughs> it costs it costs your GDP per ounce. Yeah. Like, but. Sometimes you know it, it's worth it. Sure, yeah, that's why we're going to Mars for all that it's space. Like trying for all to that drive space cinnamon. <laughs> like, do you want something driven to you from California or flown? Like, there's just so much more money in getting it if you can be the guy flying it, right? So that's kind of how sea trade took off because da- land travel is dangerous. Shit was yeah. moved in clay pots on sh- on carts without fucking shocks. So things broke a lot in transit. Yeah, Ships but that's were a lot better. But that's also long. that's that's an interesting point too, Johnny, because that's also why piracy was such a lucrative business i mean there there are oh, countries yeah, that have been pirate. run by that are or have been run by yeah, pirates that, and that's partly what led to england's uh rise to dominance was their yeah. modern uh yeah policy of yeah piracy. you don't hear that with like roadside you know brigands like hijacking and that's why and trains. companies it's, it's also the needed the power of governments to protect them from pirates right well, well that's why you had well, the, kind the of a very company, close association yeah the first companies were state sponsored but right we'll get yeah. into that in a bit too so he said, "Oh shit! Did that cut out again?" A little bit. I think. I think I, we I think can hear good. you now. Yeah, I think you're good. Uh. Oh shit! My recording stopped. Oh, that's not great. That's fine. We'll just I'll, we'll just use the Skype recording for this episode instead of yeah, we're gonna, worrying we're about have, that. I, we should I be good. All yeah. fucked. Okay. Go um. Ahead. So we uh uh so so so. They set up the trading routes along the coast there, and Spain was like, well, Spain made a deal with 
uh, Portugal through the Pope in the 1400s, where they divided the world because they were too Catholic. <laughs> Imagine to that. That's, that's yeah. Just insane. to show you also how ethnocentric like the Europeans' approach to exploring the world was. They were divided up amongst themselves before they met anyone who lived there. <laughs> just kind of crazy. Yeah. But the, it was the Treaty of I always say this wrong. Tordesillas, Tordesillas. I don't know. Yeah, that's how you say it, Johnny. Just try to say try to say it as offensively as you can, and it'll probably be pretty close. The Treaty of that's definitely closer. Yeah, not that offensive, so it couldn't have been that close. Yeah. I mean, it's offensive, but... <laughs> Pope picked a line in, like, the Atlantic Ocean and divided the world in half there. How does the Pope uh, know so... where lines are in the ocean? <laughs> yeah, well, that I mean, was back in the sure days when... People told him he didn't go out there. But that was back in the day when Popes had, like, mistresses and, like, were basically, it's... like, emperors, right? Yeah, they had private armies, and it's like, oh, yeah, you know, the Pope's troops wouldn't want to hear about that. And it's like, wait, aren't you the Pope? It's like, yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, crazy, man. Strangle you with my That's hat. That's so weird. Yeah. Anyways, the uh, so they divided <laughs> it up. So Portugal kind of got the stuff they already had, and the Pope was, said, Spain, you can have whatever they didn't take yet, which was the Western Hemisphere. So and it was only a couple of years after. What year was that? Columbus. 14. 14- Ninety-four. Oh wow! So this is like immediately after there, they were like, "Oh, there's crap over there. You should, yes. uh, so we should, we should start to figure this out." Wow! So they yeah. immediately started just dividing it up before they even had settlements. They knew before hey, they we, even knew what was actually there. They just yeah, assumed something they, was there. Yeah, that's crazy. Because isn't that like a fake narrative? The whole like everyone thought the Earth was not round, and only Columbus thought it was round. Isn't that all bullshit? Yeah, like of the majority of educated people knew they, the Earth was round no, no, by they that thought point. Thought it was round. They just I don't. A lot of people didn't think it was. Either as big as it was, or they didn't count on a landmass being there. If you did the math yeah. right, and you were like, "You're gonna sail from Spain to Japan," yeah, like you're crazy in a wooden boat, you're not gonna make it. But it's like, yeah. oh, there's a whole giant landmass in that's, between. That's so some of the valid yeah. criticism of the time was just like, "You're not gonna make it," not well, because the Earth is square. Think but about he think about like he made it there. So he was so right. confident that to this day we still some people call them Indians. He thought we made it's it to India. Indian. Yeah. Yeah, that was that's why they're like everyone knows that's why they're called Indians because he. Thought but you he would lose Indian. track of time probably, like you know. But I would think that he would have I to mean, think that they... there's something else along the way because I, I mean I, you're right, Johnny, to go out on the high seas like that, thinking, oh, I'll just go from Europe to Japan or China or wherever, and there's nothing in between. Can you imagine, like, if there was no landmass, what the storms would be out? like in the middle of Colorado or California. Yeah, land. Yeah. It would be insane. The Pacific Crossing took like another couple hundred years for them to be able to make it regularly. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's Columbus's huge. Columbus's time and that's – So imagine doubling Atlantic that, yeah. And crossing North America. So it was insane. If I, I would have said you wouldn't make it, you know, Yeah. if I was smart enough. But – yeah, even a yeah. smart person would have been like, that's, that's fucking nuts, dude. This that's treaty insane. is why in modern times there's Spanish and like Portuguese people in random places that doesn't appear to have any sense to it. Like, why are there yeah. Spanish people in Mexico, but also the Philippines, but, you know, also um, Brazil is you know, Portuguese. Parts, and why yeah, do they part, generally yeah. all speak yeah. Spanish? <laughs> It's because that that line, the way the Brazilians don't, the way the line chopped it up. It's but there's there's Portuguese people in parts of uh, I think I don't know I don't want to say if I'm not sure, but (laughs) good call. (laughs) They uh, so that line is why like Spanish Philippines happened and and things like that. Right, right. Kind of picked their pieces, and those empires were all about just raping the land and the resources and the people. Very much just show up. God sent us so we can do what we want and take what we want. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you say yeah. that. I, I read a quote, which I think is actually a really good quote to read um, at some point. And it's by this um, one of the conquistadors. Was it? It was somebody with, um, not Cortez, Pizarro, when he met with the uh, the Incan emperor. And basically, like they just wound up killing them, killing a bunch of them, and the rest fled, and so everybody you, else died of smallpox. How do you talk though? How do you communicate across a language that that not, you've not just well. discovered? Not well, and that's why isn't it, that crazy though? That what, two human, why, yeah. two fully formed Homo sapiens in, in that time, not where there's close, no yeah. like English has become the main language on Earth, and you know, partly that's because we do need something that everyone knows a little bit. You know, so Luke, part of why it was such a bad system is the way you did get a translator is you captured somebody and they were your prisoner long enough till they learned some stuff. To oh, communicate. yeah. And it was like 
But that's not somebody. And a lot of sell, times like, it was it was through torturing them too, because you had yeah, to get that's information not somebody you from like them. Hired that's motivated to be morally impartial, you know? You're, right. You're kind of you're yeah. kind of setting up a lot of problems there. But any but anyway, you don't really know what he's saying back to his leader. Not at all. He could be like, he said your balls are tinier than his kids or something. I mean that that's that's famously that's kind of what happened with Cortez. Uh, what about <laughs> go on the people. People thought he was a god when he showed up in Mexico City. His, he, Cortez, all right, this is a good one. Cortez was the Spanish conquistador or conqueror who, who came with only a few hundred men and a few ships to uh, found you know, gold, god, and glory in Mexico over Spain. And he went to what's now Mexico City, Tenochtitlan, a Tenochtitlan, or whatever you want to call it, and it was this giant man-made, this giant city on a man-made lake they had built, so they could have water because there's so many people living there, and uh, they had a a legend of this pale snake god that would arrive riding on a deer, uh, like and and come to like and he like it was this prophecy, and then this fuck motherfucker Ancient comes aliens, from Europe. Bro. And a, a metal, a suit of metal armor, and they don't even have metal working, and he's wearing it. He's covered in it, and he's riding a horse, which they don't have in North America. Those are brought over with uh, boomsticks, and, and they got boomsticks, guns, screaming that, for yeah, gold, <laughs> sticks that can point and kill at a distance, and they're demanding to see the leaders. So and it's not like you can clearly, see a bullet; like you just see the explosion, and then the person like head is you know, gone. Or eyeball is out and bleeding. Like, yeah, yeah that's crazy. So you even said you were reading Guns, Herbs, and Steels. Be like, have the guy be like, do you think these guys are really gods? Be like, I don't know. They showed up to that first village and were real angry, and half that village has died from this horrible disease since they yeah. got there. Oh, shit, that's some god stuff. Maybe, well, yeah. maybe they are gods then. Well, if they were angry and people yeah. died around them, it's like, they didn't nah, have germ just, theory. No, and they did, the, the na- theory, natives too. Like they don't even. It's not that they don't even have like weapons to counter things like guns, which they don't. They have no concept of what a gun is. So even if they did have weapons to fight back that that could kind of compete, you don't even know what tactics to yeah, use like, in that sense. If you're if you fast forward fifty years and you see the smartphones of like fifty years from now. If it's still fundamentally a smartphone looking thing, you won't be that surprised. You'll be like, wow, I didn't think they would get, you know, the floating phone technology <laughs> yeah. by then. Right. But it's still a, a smartphone. It's a concept you have already. Right. Yeah. I mean, they had the concept of spears, I would imagine, but. But their warfare in North, and especially in uh, Mexico area, the, the idea was more capture for sacrifice. Well, certainly so with the Aztecs, for, for sure. Bludgeoning and clubbing. You wanted to capture them and yeah. you bring them back and, and either trade them or sacrifice them to your gods if you didn't need to trade them. Yeah. So they weren't ready for ranks of armored dudes to just slash everyone to death. That wasn't like that was a foreign concept to them. Yeah. It's just a terrifying genocide. Can I can I just read this quote to you uh, about that this guy who was with Pizarro uh, when they basically destroyed the Incan Empire? How I, he, yeah, I interrupted you. To how how, how he how he introduced his uh, his letter to I guess the I guess the king, uh, but this is how he starts. The prudence, fortitude, military discipline, labors, perilous navigations, and battles of the Spaniards, vassals of the most invincible emperor of the Roman Catholic Empire, our natural king and lord, will cause joy to the faithful and terror to the infidels. For this reason, and for the glory of our God our Lord, and for the service of the Catholic Imperial Majesty, it has seemed good to me to write this narrative and to send it to your majesty, that all may have a knowledge of what here is related. It will be to the glory of God, because they have conquered and have brought to our holy Catholic faith so vast a number of heathens, aided by his holy guidance. Okay, so, so religion plays a big role. <laughs> so that's where their mindset was at. So you had to be crazy enough to go there and really believe everything that guy just said. And that's kind of what happened. That's, what else did you have to do back then? I, yeah, it's like, what is the alternative? I don't know, like starve in a Portuguese prison, I guess? Like, if you're just some crazy Portuguese so, guy? And well, that's like, the difference between explorers and then, like, w- later when you send armies. You send explorers when you don't know what you're going to get, and you have to find people who are sort of maybe in a desperate enough spot in yeah. life or maybe that uh, curious and exploratory that they'll – take that risk like or for both. now the yeah. equivalent would be going to mars i guess right people yeah. are so, yeah, signing gonna, up for the gonna, one the, way trip you're gonna to mars. need those same type of people who are just like I, i'm just maybe that's just an, a certain type of personality that's willing to go for it like that I, I think so i think you have to be right 
when uh when Cortez's men landed in Mexico, he sank their ships to be like, all right, guys, there's no if we get in a in a fucked up situation, we gotta we solve it. Away. There's nowhere to run. Like this is it. We're I feel like that's a, a dumb way to prove that point. You could just say that, but still have ships. <laughs> well, no, just, I th- I maybe think, you need wood. For I, th- I think he used. I think he used the wood to build the camp to build like a fort, right? Yeah, but he yeah he had shipwrights with him, and then he they, burnt they, the whole camp down and said, "Now let's figure it out, fuckers." <laughs> yeah, I made you build a camp, and now I, I made you burn it down to show you how serious this is. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if that's that's how not history, Spanish, guys. Yeah, no, don't think that's history. None of this. Is, yeah. The Spanish Portuguese model was the more the brutal one, and uh, the reason I brought Cortez up was at some point the uh, the, the Aztec king figured out because he was just obsessed with like gold and tits and like. You know, money and then like, it doesn't seem very godly of them. Yeah. And they realize they were just people, but uh, th- that was the more brutal, like purely extractory. But uh, the English Empire was more of the piracy model. Uh, let's talk about pirates a little before we let's talk about pirates. That's like a Charlie Kelly. It's segment. funny that now in 2018, when you say the word pirate, unlike when I was a kid, where I would picture like the Johnny Depp stereotype yeah. kind of image, I now think of Somali pirates. Well, the, the, there are your pirates. I but mean. I just mean, I, I, is that a sign of like getting older, where like your view of a pirate is not that child, like, oh, are you mighty? Like, no, it's just a sign of pirates <laughs> in, in, off the coast of Africa. <laughs> yeah, I think of when I hear pirates, I think of people downloading like Disney movies and stuff. You know, that's true. That's true. If you ever illegally downloaded something, you're technically a pirate, right? But the first pirates were like government employees, so. Uh, they were well like, the first well, modern well in pirates. like colonial times you mean yeah there were yeah. pirates throughout much of history so you're a pirate by stealing a copy of the information without it's not like a single object that you now doesn't exist but you steal it's sort of like the ship's taking a supply somewhere and you hop on board quick make a copy of that information and then leave that'd be pretty dope well, yeah that's like modern day online piracy they're saying intellectual property is a is is a thing. It's a resource. Yeah, you don't have the right to know something just because I know it. No, but if, if you, I want to make money off of yeah. it first, well, yeah. the, argu- you the argument to too is that, that if you're yeah if you're taking it, then you're not otherwise like with your boat example. If you're going on the boat and making copy, then when I get to port and I set up my shop and sell all my you know cinnamon, you're like space oh, cinnamon. Yeah, space cinnamon. You're like oh, I'm good. And it's like, where'd you get that cinnamon, space cinnamon? It's like, I don't know, just, I, I have a friend, he gave me some. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's like, what are they going to do? Way. Check the records? There are none. I know. That's what I mean. <laughs> you copied it somehow magically on a boat. Like Johnny, just when, whenever I hear somebody talking about history in any sense, I was also just at the British Museum recently and, and like kind of walking through everything from like 6,000 BC all the way to like 1900, took like two hours. And you look at all these artifacts. Pretty Anytime fast. I get this like kind of sense of history, I realize that like one, it's kind of crazy that this is stories of human beings just living life, but so many times and so many things happened. Yeah. And then I also think it's so easy to get you. You're in your everyday life. You don't think of yourself as inside history. Right. You're a microcosm within something that will be a footnote in a textbook one day. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, when people say like oh, I I don't follow politics or like I can't stand the news, it's like yeah, I don't enjoy it, but that's the history happening now. Well, people don't yeah. think that way. They don't think that they they are in history. That's nothing in your life is is gonna be part of history most likely. But but I mean, people don't think. But you'll be in a time that's considered part of an era. Like you can look right. back and it's say, worth paying attention. I mean, to. you. I have no idea what happened in the 1890s, but I know that it was a time before World War One and after cowboys. Kind yeah. of. It was like around the end of one and the beginning of the other. And for some Crazy people, that guy. was just their life. Yeah, that's when they. Well, lived. for us going back into history, we can categorize it as just like a vague sense of. But even in like, like ancient I, I Roman times, my they would have thought that they were they were the like ultimate modern time like romans thought that this was it we've created the empire we've brought civilization to humanity there's the you know savages elsewhere and this is as good as it gets right like they would have thought that we are the pinnacle yeah but they also built shit to list last like thousands of years crazier shit was going on all the time i guess what i'm saying is like it's easy to think that oh we're History is over, and we're in like the stable time where nothing happens. But I'm I'm saying I think people think that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 
But I think yeah, what I think time. when I yeah, look at history like this who... is like, no, big things can and do happen. And, and they will happen. And probably will. Like 9-11 yeah. was one that was like, oh, we're in history, not outside of it. Like right, shit yeah. can go down. Yeah. Like buildings falling in, in a war. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's happened before. Yeah. Luke, I was just about to say those guys that thought, oh, yeah, this is the pinnacle of humanity. And then they saw their lighthouse. There was a giant library at Alexandria burned down. They're like, oh, shit. Exactly. This, this this isn't permanent or this is just, you know. And what so what I find history. fascinating and I don't know enough history to yeah. do this with all the cool things but is to to show how something can have a building narrative like an empire collapsing and then come down to maybe two or three really central events that that pushed everyone farther like obviously the assassination of Franz Ferdinand for World War 1, right? Yeah. Like weird start to But there what was that so became, much yeah. behind that yeah, that well, it was all what was behind it. Yeah, yeah, and so like, but it's also interesting to know that. And so like, what event? Yeah, like, did the event already pass that might be today's crazy, like, like Franz Ferdinand, or they would say the election of Trump? If you know, I'm not yeah. saying I'm not trying to be dramatic. Like, Trump no, I see what you're saying. It's like now fine, we're down but... on, on like a like a track, right? Yeah, and this track's going to end it with something crazy or like a, a point where the branch yeah. goes two ways because of yep. something critical that happens or doesn't happen. Well, you could you could probably make arguments for all sorts of tracks, right? Yeah, like th- this is something like what caused the fall of the Roman Empire. Well, do you mean the day of? Like when the city was sacked, or do you mean three hundred years earlier when this guy passed? Three hundred. That's what I mean. This yeah. guy passed a reform, and that led to this, and that led to that. And if he had not done that reform, well, that wouldn't have happened. And then you can argue, well, th- something similar would have happened, or somebody still would have enacted that reform. And but you can kind of get into real detail that way. Yeah, th- that's the whole reason to study history, right? Is so that yeah, totally. Well, that's why so it's that interesting. You don't- Instead of looking back and be like, oh, that, that was the moment, you could see it coming and be like, oh, this is one of those moments rather than – Right. Yeah. You can feel the tension building. And I do have to say I don't know if it's just because I've, I've, I'm sort of an older adult who's just trying to make sense of the world. You're an older adult? No, I mean like older than when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Luke. And I'm well, even – very unique nice situation. Like, <laughs> yeah, Luke's sitting here in his tweed jacket with his pipe. And I meant gray not hair. in my like teen years when I was learning this history, you know, in high yeah, school. No, I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> like, I, it's it's easy for me to, to I don't know. I feel a tension in the time we're in right now. There, there's like something critical, like yeah. zoomed out about how we view the world that's yeah. shifting. Well, this came up on on one of the podcasts. I think we were arguing about. You, know, you, you were talking about how history today, as we live, there's never been. It's life has never been as good for as many people. Yeah. And that was something that I agreed with. However, how that's being sustained or maintained, I said, is also unprecedented. And that worries me that that's not kind of considered. We've never been here before. Yeah, that's that seems like it's not considered as part of that question because there's no one person running the show. It's just sort of all these things coming. No, I, I know it's never been, but we've also never been in a situation where we have. I, I think you're right. Is as much uh, life is as good for as many people as it can, as as it uh, has ever been before. But at the same time, like, what happens when something in that system snaps, and all of a sudden but you that's, have that's been the same situation for hundreds of years now. In eighteen, not on not on a not on a global scale. A lot of people, not, not on a global scale. You could say, even back then, you could say, "Wow, things are a lot better now than they've ever been in history." True, but it, it, for. For most people, like it was true, even like history, at least for the last few hundred years, for most. Yeah, but I just feel like there's like X factors today that you haven't had throughout history. Like, okay, your your city was destroyed and your empire was destroyed, so that falls. Some of you run into the hills, like live with like other tribes, whatever. There's other empires around the world. We, that's different than having thousands of nukes pointed at each other. Or that's very true. Or having like ice caps melting into the oceans, Good right? Point. You know, or, what I mean? or just that that empires like uh, the United States or Russia or China, they they don't they don't die just like peacefully, like poof, yes. we're gone. Their or, militaries are separate things yeah. that the government controls. Right. The militaries will try to survive to the death of each country long right. before the government can figure out how to keep like a government and a military ideally are working side by side the military sees the government as 
a fair way to control people because let's face it, people need to be controlled to an extent. Yeah, that kind of fits into colonizing in general, which is yeah. is it is it always bad? Like, there's this sense of it's bad to you know invade another land and bring your culture there, right? But is that always bad? If it, you know this um, sort of um, there, there's an idea that like um, Western culture, Western civilization generally um, is just this unfair thing that only conquested areas. But, you know, I think it's important to keep a balance of, you know, the fundamental assumptions of Western society are valid and correct. Well, I think it's one of those situations too. But we still did fucked yeah, up shit in that process of yeah, spreading around. Where you'll have examples where like, aren't there, you probably know more about this, Johnny, where like, the Nazis did medical experiments and, and like some of that knowledge is super useful, right? Or like whenever knowledge like that is derived from not great sources, it's like, well, yeah, we can't do that and we shouldn't do that and we're not doing that anymore. But it's still f information. Well, like this, you is, don't this throw is what the we data out once you have it. No, that's what I mean. It's like that's that's been useful. So I, I think in the sense of when you refer to Western culture, or say like the idea of Western democracy, right? I was talking to somebody at work about this before. I was saying how, like, you know, the fact that we live in a country where I'm pretty sure because I've done it, I can just go online and say F you to the president and yeah. not not I, not have repercussions. That's a Not only that, the court has said that he can't block you. No, but that's what I mean. Like, So he has to sit on his golden toilet and watch you say <laughs> and fuck angri you. And angrily tweet back yeah. at me. But that's like I don't know what percentage – of people in the world can do that without that's, that's any That's a recourse. remarkable fact that we take for granted. I think people haven't even thought about if it. You do that how different in that a is. lot of places. At the very least, it would be forced, or, or taken down, or, or you would be kicked off. Or throughout most of history, which in most places obviously too. Twitter kicks people off for way stupider reasons. Just but if also, they're on the, the side also, of politics also, they like. Like, but, like we just said, compared to the the alternative that we've seen throughout history, the fact that that's your problem, like. You know, looking at like, well, what's, you know, free speech on like something like Twitter. It's like, at least this is a debate. Yeah. This hasn't been the case for most people throughout history. Well, so the, that's why I would say the crucial um, the thing I want to keep. And Johnny, you, you hinted at this it, before. It's just to point it out. You hinted at this before when you said like a sort of side note when you were talking about Portugal and Spain. You said also out of necessity. And what that does is it sort of shows that one – it's not always that the primary motivation of, of colonizers is I just want to sadistically like take over and destroy and exploit people. Like often the energy to, and the need to explore is born no, out of and, necessity because you need to and live. A and, lot, and the way it works in a lot of times is, is the way a lot of horrible institutions work that are dehumanized that allow them to do terrible things. For example, companies – is you know you have a king or a lord or some fucking guy sitting in a chair all in being like oh we need to increase revenues for this and that and the city and the people need this and that it's like well what can you do well you technically own these lands we could send some people to see if they can bring some gold back and then you send your craziest pieces of shit people over there to try to make it work you know you don't send the people you can't spare you spend the ones you, not only you can but you want to get rid of so it's part of why it was like, you know, it, Spain wasn't – at the time wasn't full of just murdering sadistic people that exactly. were just like looking out for – I mean they kind of were. The Spanish Inquisition actually started the same year. I was just going to ask discovered about that. America. I was just going to so be like, Spain wait a minute. Bad example. <laughs> uh, pick a different country, you know. But wouldn't um, you say that a lot of people – because the Dutch were involved in a slave trade. Which they were and kind of got kickstarted the mod the you know what we think of the transatlantic slave trade, uh, you know they were doing it to make it work and make the make the money and and you know dredge some more freaking dikes so they can uh, drain some more land flooded yeah. land. But that gets into competition too because it's like well you have to do it then to compete against other people right. That's why World War One happened right. That's why anything crucial. Yeah. has a boiling point it's it's the if i don't if i don't take the next step in competition right. i will lose to them right. the world war 1 was kind of they ran out of the map cuz for a few hundred <laughs> years the fighting yeah. like, throughout the 16th 17th 18th century the fighting in europe was either 
trying to snatch up land in Europe over titles or familial bullshit or whatever, uh, having wars that way, or you, you just clashed, you know, on the you know basically first to get to somewhere. You might right. you know we'll fight these guys up. Oh, we found it now. It's ours. You know, you know. Uh, and then once they filled the map out, they that's when they started being you know Germany kind of looked around and was like, all right, we got an empire. Let's take everyone else's. God, that's exactly what happens in video games. It, like the sort of, empire. Yeah, if you play like empire building video games, where it's like, all right, took all the resources that are around. I guess we just fight it out now. Yeah, do get out now. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's creepy. Obviously, necessity in in a oh like if you can place yourselves in the shoes of people that were living in a certain time period, ask yourself like really honestly, would I have the same like. Um, hindsight as I take from my easy life in 2018, would I have that level of hindsight when I see, you know, an opportunity in front of me to, to well, and most people conquest too, a, an area? Well, some some of those people, too, I, I think you're right where it's – some of them are just looking for opportunity or a way out of, say, starvation or poverty, right? I mean, other times, yeah, you're going to have crazy sadistic people who would normally be like, wait, I can't serial kill here because there's a society with rules and laws and stuff. But if I go on this boat, I know that there are savages over there because it's written in all these diaries and I can kind of go hog wild. But at the same time, most people, the majority of people were just poor and starving and trying to get by. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think people individually had less choices. uh, Your mic got unplugged. Am I back? Hello? Oh, now you're back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the people just back then just had you had less individual choices. You know, you're, you're more at the whim of yeah. large pieces. So I think it's happen, important yeah. to remember we have a a very um, it's easy to judge from the perspective of like right now and not really worrying about meals and death of everyone. You know, yeah. um, yeah. to not yeah. imagine like what what you or anyone is capable of when it seems like it's life or death. Walking like, dead. Am I gonna die in the streets <laughs> or am I gonna, you know, get on this boat and see what's up with that land they call India across the ocean? Well that and that especially happened when you get into if we want to swing it back to England, how when they first tried to colonize it didn't go well and then they started doing the Was whole, that the Roanoke thing? Right. And then they started doing the whole well, we tell you what, we'll we'll like send you there and then you, you work basically for a certain amount of time and then you get land. Indentured servitude or Essentially, something? Essentially, yeah. For like a terms of like two, three, four, five years, something like. What that. What do you guys think happened to Roanoke? Speak. So Roanoke was the sixteen oh ancient aliens, bro. Eight one, right? It was uh, uh no fifteen. Uh, it, it was like fifteen ninety six or something. I like have that. it here. Oh, fifteen eighty five. Oh, it was that early? Wow. Yeah, the first yeah, one so- was fifteen sixty five in wow. Florida, the Spanish one, and then fifteen eighty five was this famous Roanoke colony, which just disappeared without. Like any explanation? Yeah, they all starved. They, they actually, I think they left for the time, basically a like a pretty good message behind. What so, was the message? What did they carve into a tree or something? Right. So they left for a while. They were supposed to come back in like a year, and they didn't come back for like two or three, I think. And when they came back, it was gone. So probably half, because what happened in everyone that settled in the time, it happened in the Plymouth colonies. That's why we got Thanksgiving. It's like the first winter, pretty much half the people die, right? Right. Uh, and then, the, and then the surviving people run to the natives, the locals, for help, and they're like, they throw themselves on, and they're not a threat at that point, even if they were before or weren't. It's like, okay, we'll help you. The human nature takes over, and they take pity, and then they help them, and then after a while, they go, you know, there's not a lot of you left. Just come live in our village, and we'll, you know, you can help us out. And they so they just, just got absorbed them. into the Native Americans. Roanoke, I think, was the local tribe or a nearby island that was habit- inhabited by natives. And so they, it was carved in a tree. And there's no way if the natives had came and killed everyone, they would have written in English the name <laughs> of where to find them. Yeah, but here's yeah. my other question. There's no way if they were deliberately leaving a note, they would just write Roanoke and didn't even say, we're going to Roanoke. You don't think so? I don't Wait, know. Wait, what they, what, they death, write? Pretty much everyone's dead. You don't even – Maybe nobody even thinks they're coming back for you at this point. 
and you're the one guy who's like, I'm just going to leave a message. And like, all right, you're wasting your time. I'm going to go where there's like fish and corn to eat where we're not all just yeah, it'd dying be like, on it, the shoreline. Yeah, you'd be like, fuck them. They left us. It's, like, I'm not yeah, leaving a so note. It was probably just one guy right. or somebody who's a few more letters. Somebody coming back. <laughs> just to yeah, say we're going to. Rock <laughs> in 1500s, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, so the English did that. And then they, they just start, sort of just raided and robbed the Spanish Empire until they got enough money to start theirs. Um, but uh, the Dutch Empire is interesting because it gets overlooked because it was smaller and it its battles weren't quite as grandiose as some of the other ones. But uh, has more longer lasting effects in some ways. The first corporation was the Dutch East India Company, the VOC. Uh, first company to issue stock, to issue dividends. Uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Amsterdam, like Time experience had a stock market, a lively stock market in the coffee shops, and you had short selling and uh, buyouts and hostile takeovers and you know venture capitalists of the day made money off of something. It could go buy somebody else out or start a new – it was a crazy time. And uh, it, they basically the way the first company – and companies – are stronger than nations in some respects today we can argue because they transcend boundaries and borders and they last you know they 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 outlast us so it's kind of creepy when you think about companies as an entity corporations because they're only a few hundred years old the fucking dutch started this as a spice monopoly yeah what freaks me out about a corporation as an entity is just that um if if our culture and rules kind of go too far in giving it like an identity, like a, a, a it's not a unified thing. And so what all the humans involved do is they each give up some of their moral responsibility for acting in a just way because it's like, oh, well, it's not just my fault. There's like 50 people above me. How can I possibly right. change this whole thing? Right. I'm still going to get my paycheck. So, so they've become part of what they have collectively become. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it gets tricky. So if, if you take, if you give it oh, too much, like, too oh, it's an entity, it's like, fuck that, you know? And that probably the same thing happened in, in colonization, where, like, you're just like, well, this is the move of our society is we need to spread. Got it. You know, Spain cinnamon, is doing bro. it. If we don't do it, we're, we're going to lose to Spain. Spain's going to have all the resources of the world. We're going to lose all the cinnamon. And we'll starve, you know? Yeah. Well, so, think about all the countries to ever break away from the motherland. Uh, have any of them ever rejoined? Ever? In modern times? What do you mean by break away and rejoin? Well, like us in the American Sp- Revolution, you know? Heck yeah, 1776, because we oh, were really the them. first big one. Yeah, but wouldn't you I, – I don't know. It depends on what you mean by separate, because like Canada is still related to – uh, the UK and so is Australia, right? Like they still yeah, have. Yeah, but have they? But they they gain sovereignty. They're they're very separate. They, they're they not basically no, but, share a common law, but they own their own sovereignty. But that's they what can't I'm, be, England can't tell them what to do anymore. No, I I, I understand that. I'm just saying not directly. No, no, that's what I'm they saying. They can like, tell us to tell them. To tell like them. it's it's still the they've still total. decided that it's oh. in their interest. Like a country like Australia, it's still in their interest to have ties. To some place like England, like the UK. Yeah. It's, well, it's in it's your not interest, in their interest in, to just totally cut off ties. Well, no, it, it's in nobody's interest. To, it's well, uh, you th- could this whole argue thing that. is one giant cooperation. Right? You could argue what your values are. Are your values economic? Are they social? Who you know? Who decides that? Yeah, I mean that comes down to uh, you know there are some countries that are better and there are some countries that are worse. Uh, you're gonna have to define those terms. What what I just <laughs> yeah, need? countries, Luke. <laughs> oh, your mic cut out again. Am I back? I don't know. I, I'm just curious what you mean by better and worse. I mean, um, there are countries where life is a kind of life that more people are flocking to, which are Western countries primarily, Europe, just, America, Canada. You mean money. Luke, how many people flock yeah, to Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah, I mean, prosperity. Luke. How many people flock where? Sodom and Gomorrah. Were they better? So What's what better? I was— you should- Shouldn't have used that that type of term. I'm going to make you pick pick which country sucks now. <laughs> um, I suppose what I meant by better was just that um, name you me know, nine countries. The the uh, wealth the better, we- there was man. more wealth that can be spread around to to people and more flexibility for them to climb a hierarchy within the society if they want to. So uh, your options in North Korea are obviously extremely limited compared to South. Anyways, Korea. what I'm trying to say is, if if the one, if a, if one positive thing from colonization, despite all the negative things, 
um, should be really embraced, which is often overlooked. It's that the Western con- like concept of the individual and and individual freedom is is an important thing that you see in all successful Westernized countries, and people want to live there because of that. Yeah, we also so we have systems along a, those that's lines. That's not a direct. Sorry. Jim. No, go ahead. It's not a direct effect of co- colonialism. I would say that is the the Enlightenment sneaking in because this is one of the arguments for these big systems that develop as brutal as colonization and that whole age of imperialism was. It created a big enough marketplace and just like space for thinkers and ideas to develop that led to Enlightenment and – you know, you know, so you mean there was more of those ideas into the society that way, even if it was that we've talked before, like it's even if it's in you can prove it's in your selfish self-interest to be a good person or right. to be you know, to have a stable system. Even if you want yeah. to get more than I'm having like a stable system, you're more likely to get that. And, and yeah, yeah, there's the economic was, aspect. That, that's and, just the and, cooperation and the in ideas, general. Yeah. Proliferation of like. It helped. It helped yeah. be able to be like. Well, then you must care about like reason and factual based evidence. But I mean, I think it's fair uh, to say that as human beings, we can either um, get what we want from other human beings by forcing it, or by creating some kind of fair system where we want to cooperate with each other. You don't feel like you're being cheated. I don't feel like I'm being cheated. Well, it's funny you say that. That's too, because, ideal, I think. Well, that's that's inner rare uh, within the tribe. That's exactly what you have to do. But when you go outside of the tribe, tribe of Israel, you can do the op. <laughs> no, I mean like traditional, like hunting gathering tribes, like you yeah, know, yeah, no hunting gathering tribe. Like it's all about reciprocity. Like uh, you're gonna, it's just it's a it's a social contract. I'm gonna give you some shit. You're gonna share your shit with me. Like we're all gonna share. But as soon as you go outside the tribe, I have no obligation to them. I don't know who they are. Yeah, on this the is hunt, true on a massive massive scale too. On a on larger the hunt scale, the with, tribe. Yeah. It, it, I'll try my hardest because if we all do, the chances of us all succeeding is better because one of us will make the shot. Right. Like if we all try our hardest to make the shot, then if one of us gets it, then we all get to eat. It's like but, ancient yeah, insurance. In a huge place with strangers, that doesn't work. They're just going to eat it and without you and not share. So right. there's no doubt that uh, p- part of what plays into colonization and its success is that our brains evolved many ways to create this concept of in group and out group, right? To other eyes. Yeah, people. that's that's my point. I think it's very much routed in our evolution in and, terms of and, just and our, for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, of longer years. than that even. Yeah. Millions. And Billions. our brains probably in that process gave multiple ways for that to be expressed, right? One is racism. That's an easy way to put in oh, group, to exclude, out group, yeah, right? right uh, yeah. Like just look at the the outward appearance of somebody and and judge right. them as out group if if they're not in your yeah. racial identity. That's uh, a great point. Yeah. Another one is like l- cultural things like language, right? Or even accent. Language, accent, um, yeah. any kind of appearance thing. You, right. You can just easily say, well, not you, only you, are they the bad people because they're going to try and invade us, so we're going to attack them first. If you're an army and you're told that in you know the year 15 whatever, you're just going to go attack them. Why would yeah. you what are you going to do join the other team? They'll just take you as a prisoner and do awful things to you. Everyone was doing yeah. awful things to everyone. It's like that feeling of desperation of like you got to act, man. You got you know to make a choice. Like? Are you with us or are you not? You'd be like, you know I'm with you, like? fuck it. Well, you're yelling that it's God's exactly, on my side. So, yeah, and I that guess too. So, yeah. Exactly like the the walking dead. Yeah, where it's it's like you'll see they might hate somebody in their own group, but they run up against another group and they and they're just like, oh gone. shit, it's us. Well, because you know what you're dealing yeah. with too. It's like even if I think you're in my group and you might try to kill me, <laughs> I at least have an idea of what you might try to do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas if somebody from another group we talk comes, the same like, fighting classes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we know the same <laughs> no, jujitsu, like you know, zombie yeah. apocalypse jujitsu. You know, like I know at least what I'm going into, which that makes sense evolutionarily. Like. You you don't want to start a fight that you don't you're you're not sure what the factors are right yeah yeah it's like, not safe it's better yeah. to run away yeah yeah you want to know exactly what you're dealing with so the, I would say this I, the, this like quality of creating the us and them is is just so inherent to our brains but that's a very low resolution safe model great pink and, and you can too. actually yeah it is you can actually like step back from that and 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 I think get over that um, but it's just so easy for for people to to control other people by 
you know, flipping that switch in them. It's easy to raise an army against someone else. I think you're right. I think it is a, it, it, it's is—it's very Switch-like, right? Where you can kind of point to any sort of factor that, again, you can categorize into a noticeable difference between two cultures, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you, see, you, you see this all the time even in American politics. Well, we, do, we just do that with the other side of politics. Yeah. But life is so good right now, meaning that we don't have so – a lo- st- You're breaking. Come so many people are not struggling for survival in in um, some basic ways, right? Like they're not worried about their next meal, essentially. That that they have to use this sort of psychology that came with our toolkit, and they use it with things like politics instead of with things like surviving on a on a savanna. You well, know? well, to their defense, though, it's like if the, that level has been, if that bar has been raised. And there are people doing better than you or people who have more rights than you or people who have more access to whatever than you, then, yeah, why? Of course, you're going to flip on that switch. Like, that's that's fair game as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's it makes those, sense. It doesn't mean the, it's the, the ideal thing to do. But I'm saying like like uh, those other people who you feel like have an advantage, whether or not it's because of the reason that you say, yeah, come on, they do the same thing to you. You just said that. You just said everybody would do the same what was thing. That? Right? What was that? Isn't that, Joe, isn't that just an evolutionary tragedy of the commons that we should I, I think absolutely, really work yeah. hard to overcome? I yeah, agree. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I'm just saying I think that's why it happens the way it and does. And I think you do overcome yeah. that when the when the pressure of life is difficult enough because you have to be your best self in order to survive, whereas when life is easy – you can let a lot of little things here and there, like that that meme you sent yeah. me the other day, Johnny. It was um, hard times create uh, strong men. Strong men create um, good times. Good easy t- times. Good or easy times. Well, stable, which leads to easy times creates weak yeah. men. Weak men create bad times. You know, it, yeah. it, there's a cycle that is very easy to subscribe to because, um, you know the funda- something fundamentally true about what makes a a good time a good time with yeah. millions and millions and billions of humans cooperating you know there might be something fundamental to that that in good times is so easy to forget yeah. that we cycle back into things getting so bad until yeah. we self select well, that good s- time yeah. quality in a brain that right, in a right cooperation now, sort of with like is- increasing isolationism in like a very global or at least economically global era where you have, you know, Trump doing his own thing in terms of isolating us. Um, People, when they say isolation, by the way, they mean cultural. We're beyond economic isolation at this point. No, that's, that's what you, you know that's what, what economic saying. isolation is? It's yeah. Iran and North Korea. Nobody wants that. Yeah. No single country can support a complex society on its own anymore. Yeah. yeah. What they really mean is they don't want outside cultures. They want that their yeah. culture isolated. But my they're, point they're, is – yeah, my point is with like Trump, and then you see it too with like Brexit. Like that's another example. Um, I I think you're right. I think it's it's a clear example of forgetting how badly things can go when you have any sort of kind of politicalized isolation. And I mean that's the reason why these things were created. Something like the United Nations. We went through two world wars, basically destroyed pretty much everything, and people realized we can't we can't keep doing this shit. This is insane. So many people are dead, so much money lost, so many lives lost, so much of going back so far. And it's like, well, what's the alternative? Well, a crazy bureaucracy where we kind of all hang out, hang out and meet up and try to like pass resolutions for like, you know, global good. And it's like, yeah. And remember that if the cooperation breaks down, we risk another one of those. And it's like, so you deal with that bureaucracy, you deal with that inefficiency, you deal with, you know, not always agreeing with like you know this was the whole argument behind brexit oh we're getting screwed we pay you know we we fund this and we we give up so much of our economy and you know all this sort of stuff and it's like yeah well the the whole point of the european union and and stuff like the un is to not devolve into a point where all right it all just falls apart it all unravels but we've been so we've been it's been so long since it has all unraveled now and i think that's why you're seeing sort of this this step back where it's like Oh yeah, well we we feel like we're getting screwed, and it's like, are you willing to risk that social insurance policy that has kind of been working for you for the last you know eighty years? Yeah, so there's it's dangerous, there's it's a dangerous game to play. There's an element of times change, and you have to either subscribe or, you know, let go of things that are are in other words, multiculturalism, right? Like 
that that's something that if you're used to living in a town where it's just people exactly like you, yeah, right. and and the town starts to look like you know something you don't recognize, like there are parts of Istanbul that um, so many Syrians have flooded into Turkey that they they just look like not even parts of Turkish country anymore, you know, and so it's like well. To an extent, we like that. So, for example, most major cities have like a Chinatown. They have right. a Koreatown, right? And so we like that idea of multiculturalism within a city. But when people start to see it creeping up on the majority, like in Brexit, they, they freak out enough. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So to one extent, well, it's just stupid. And to another extent, it's kind of I, – I think it's worth stating again the moral relativism thing, which is that some cultures are better than others. So – if you're complaining about another culture and it's because you think there's something immoral about it, that's very different than just being like, oh, I hate the smell of their food or something like that, right? Like there's, there's, there are some things wrong with some cultures and I would say by and large like Western cultures and societies with all their shitty past of colonization and stuff ha have – a lot of good things, whether by direct consequence or just indirect happenstance. Yeah, I think an important thing to note about that, too, is the, the fact that I, I think in some senses, if because if you think about how some countries, it, this is where it gets so complicated, too, because some countries either never had an imperialist period or they've kind of had to catch up in a different way, in a much different way, right? I mean, Japan's a really interesting example where you go from an isolationist nation, right? Like they closed their harbors and shit. They didn't want anybody in. Uh, Commodore Perry shows hundreds, up. Hundreds of years. Yeah, Commodore Perry Not shows a up. Short time. Yeah, he shows up. He shows up shooting cannons, and they say, "All right, like let him in. Like he's coming in anyways." You, um, you know the train story, right? The train story. Oh man! So yeah, that's how they wouldn't let. They used to not let trading ships in, but he yeah. showed up with a warship and launched some cannons. Right. Like Joe said. So they said, "Okay, you can enter the harbor," and then. He was trying to have an audience on the beach, and the uh, the translation wasn't great, mostly because of the cultural differences. So he had a demonstration prepared, and they set up a mini train track in a circle. Like, you know the ones in the mall you used to ride on as a kid? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Seriously, like about that size, and it was a tiny little locomotive steam engine that they like lit a little fire in and got going threw some coal in. And he wrote like somebody wrote it around in a circle and they were like, huh? Huh? And they're like, all right, yeah. that's pretty cool. We'll trade with you. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but I think I think the, the example choo, choo. I think the example of Japan is a good one because we're coming in. You see like a country go from like zero to sixty in, in not that long of time. They just hit the pedal hard. AG era? Yeah. And they you, went hard. And you wind up with a society that is fucking insane. Yeah. It's crazy. And the shit that they did leading up to and through World War II, it's it's imperialism on cocaine. It's really like oh, they, were, yeah. they were making up for lost imperialism. It was crazy. Yeah, so it, my point in being like 50 like, years, they went from a feudal yeah, system to yeah. imperializing their neighbors. Yeah, they went from like feudal Europe. Brutally, to, even more yeah, brutally to, than to Western World War II, yeah. nations well, did. I, I think part of it was they were they were catching up with all the imperialism they, they, yeah. they missed out on. and. So you would look at that culture and you would say, like, as they're evolving or as they're developing, you'd say this is insane. Like this culture, like th there's so much crazy stuff going on. Like they're gods and emperor. Like you know they're crashing planes. Their emperor is a god. Yeah. Oh, whatever. You know, like <laughs> it doesn't matter at that point. Yeah, yeah. they're they're crashing planes into boats and thinking that they're on horses and shit. Like yeah. And then World War Two happens. They lose. Uh, we come in and you would look at Japanese. They lose to science. Well, they did lose to yeah. science, that's true. But you would look at Japanese culture today and probably say, you know, r relatively speaking, pretty great. Like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, strong economy, And a lot of the aspects efficient. you see today are are things that when you dial them up all the way in a, in a negative sense, like yeah. they become bad. So like yeah. their empire depended on loyalty, right? And yeah. respect for, uh, you know, higher authority. Blind obedience, yes. And, well, and that, question, that obedient is part of the politeness that you see in Japan today. It was just, expressed yes. as obedience in like a i never question an order yes i don't have to take moral responsibility for myself because that order yeah. came from above me 
Right. Yeah. But whereas it's, Western idea, I think, yeah. is that it's the individual that has to always ask, "Am I being moral but right now?" But they've also adapted to a Western system in terms of. Well, now they have, and that's why I think it's the best well, that's what expression I'm sa- of their no, culture. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like their culture has 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 melded well. Yeah. Very well. There are plenty sense. of expressions of a, a good moral culture, but I'm just yes. saying there are also plenty of, of cultures that are just corrupt to its core. Well, well that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's like it sometimes the development is like obviously not pretty. Yeah. It's like growing pains, let's say. Well, yeah, it's like could could Japan have skirted all of that? Ideally, but like here we are. So yeah, it's like once we were able, you know, once they they were finally defeated, it's like things kind of came together for them in a much more. Uh, sustainably productive way, right? Cooperative. <laughs> yeah, I would say so at least. But uh, you know, obviously that do- even that it just doesn't happen overnight. What are you saying, Johnny? Do you think they would be? Do you think they're better off the way history unfolded, or what? It's a really good question. Or if instead of World War II happening, they never really uh, provoked uh, America, and they kind of just imperialized parts of asia and, do you, you know, know what they call that or they, or they just or if they just stayed as feudal japan and then eventually you know what kind of happened you know uh, like some english people showed up and kind of imperialized them and and now they were just kind of like today if that were the case if they didn't go imperial ambition you know maybe they're just like a poor asian country and which they're they're not you know they they have a lot of manufacturing and they're they're economically pretty strong but yeah, you can look at that and ask. Well, for you know Japanese people but living Japan today, what's better for them? Problems, man. Like the, no, I, the young people don't fuck each other anymore. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand that, but like, like no one has kids, and everyone just but lives that's in true. Boxes that, on top of each other. But that's true. And that's true in a lot of places, dude. That's <laughs> or true drawers in, in Kramer's that's apartment. Tr- that's true in Europe yeah. too. Nobody, nobody has kids anymore. That's true it's in a in trend. Children of men, dude. I mean, that's probably for the best because we have too many people, anyways. Honestly, it's like. But this is why you're seeing those clashes too, well, where where you have a lot. I mean, socioeconomic status as as your wealth increases as a society across the people within that society, birth rates drop. That's, that's pretty, not necessarily a good thing. No, I'm not saying it's. It necessarily just means a good people thing, but, that can't do the best job at raising kids yeah. in the most you know ideal circumstances with like good nutrition and but good it's good for the sustainability of the don't planet have the majority we already, of kids. Have, we already have too many people no i get that but i'm saying these problems of i i i would say like democracies survive because the people are educated enough to to keep the power that they actually have well and to keep other powers and in check if, from getting out of control they become right? uneducated they they like it's the, the forces can so easily manipulate uneducated people russian trolls bro Russian trolls can just any any kind of ideology can just take over your mind yeah. and then be that way. Um, we should wrap up soon, though, Johnny. Like, what did you have anything? Yeah. Any other themes you wanted to like? There's so much well, to jo- talk about. Joe said <laughs> we could do two parts too, but you know, nah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm I'm fading here. We we, we talked about the it's Dutch tough. East India Company. Uh, did I miss an empire? I guess I didn't really talk about the French Empire. People forget about the French. It's true. true. It's not as it's not as sexy um, in like our in my yeah. memory of history. You don't find the French to be sexy. They weren't just making cheese. They had they had galley slaves rowing their boats and Jack Shafto. Uh, yeah, slaves in the sugarcane plantations out in the West Indies. But the uh, they actually they had the, the monopoly on this porcelain empire. Well, it was an empire of imported. Like you, you, they would monopolize specific trades by just like controlling the areas where things were made. So the French mm-hmm. controlled this one village in China uh, that could make porcelain dildos. Are you serious? I, I, I said, did you see me pointing that I knew he was going to hang up, but I knew he was going somewhere really hilarious. With the, and he did. So. You were pointing to his hand. Anyway. I was pointing to his hand because I could see on the screen Johnny was about to hang up with us and say something absurd. I knew it was coming. I didn't know that it would be that fake. <laughs> uh, Maybe it's true. I don't know. Okay, he got us. Fair enough. Yeah, no, uh, well, well, well done. Well, well played. Last thing I, I wrote down here as like a category uh, to end on riff is just manifest destiny in general. Oh, God, I could talk so much about manifest destiny, dude. Um can we do, let's just, <laughs> I mean, feel free. But no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that, that 
that um, th there was a, a more negative um, aspect to that, which is sort of the imperialism of just like, you know, um, conquer things and take over the territory for your own, you know, selfish needs. But there was also a sense that started with Woodrow Wilson before World War One, and it was a sense of um, that you can actually have pride for and try to be a beacon for like true like freedom. Like if if you're a country on the world stage that that stands for something, um, yeah, I that you I, would say ideally a yeah. country like America stands for. Yeah, I don't think that's what Manifest Destiny was about. Um, what I'm saying is that that <laughs> that concept, just like the you were saying, how the Japanese culture went through different periods of evolving, that that concept became something different, and it's worth um, separating it from the let's say 16 17 1800s versions of manifest destiny um with the sort of why we entered world war one oh, you mean it yeah you mean in terms of like imposing quote unquote imposing our values versus defending the the world's a, a availability to have what we think of as like a free society yeah that's what the, and democracy yeah. right it's like uh, we value that as a western society but it's because but we think it's because of moral reasons and well, it is, isn't it? I, I would say it is, yeah. but I'm saying like you know, plenty of people for immoral reasons, as I would see it, right, would say this is why we want to make an Islamic caliphate because that is what we think is moral, you know. Even though we'd say that's you know, we value things like equality based on individuals, right, not based on their well, then it group identity on, and things like that. Then it depends on who who you mean by we, but that's a whole other. I thing. mean, we in, 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 as a general Western culture the fundamental assumption of of the enlightenment and of western well, I th culture i think that's that's true but i i think i think i feel like that's being challenged now yo it is it is yeah like i feel like that's fair enough yeah i feel like that's not i mean as... that's part of why i was so motivated to do that idw episode yeah it's just like there's well, definitely a, a, a zoomed yeah. out battle going on between yeah i feel like that's I, important big to ideas know. that's something i wanted to mention as well like it's not like i'm in support of imperialism or I'm in support of colonization, or I'm in support of certain ideas. It's I'm trying to understand them, even if it's not pretty, because I, I want to be able to deal with it, right? You have to admit the reality of something if you want to find the actual this is solution. Actually, this is one of the major points in uh, Jared Diamond's Guns, Germs, and Steel. He spends the first uh, chapter, or pro I think it's the prologue, actually, talking about how, essentially saying, like, look, I'm not supporting what terrible things people have done throughout history by highlighting them. And he said, that's a concern where I, sometimes you raise these points and people are like, Oh, so you're saying that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, I'm not saying anything. I'm just pointing out what happened so we can analyze why that happened. And, and ideally, you know, look at the factors in terms of like, all right, well maybe that's obviously not such a great idea, but right. this is how you get there. Right. Also, and this is what we talked about with history repeating itself. You have to understand it. And, to, and understanding it, you have to know the difference between what the factual events were and are verified yeah. to be and what interpretations are. Which right? is very different across I, – I mean th that's just going to happen. I think there are some interpretations that are very popular right now in 20, 2018. Um, interpretations like you can summarize Western culture by saying it's a white-dominated male patriarchy and you know, without getting into the details of why I think that's um, – kind of foolish way to singularly think about um history it, it's I, I so, think it's totally is but i'm not gonna argue that it's, now <laughs> it's so um it's so sort of black and white you know well that, that's true i enjoyed walking through this exhibit at the british museum and i just if i learned anything that was the most important fact is i learned how much detail there is to learn about all this that i don't know and I picked up on oh, a few random more. things, yeah. but mostly what I picked up on was the impression of how much I didn't know that there is this like skeleton of an outline of history I have in my mind that's just waiting to yeah. be filled in with the details of the that's muscles, the bones, way to and put the it, yeah. blood vessels. And most, the... most people just know history as a skeleton. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. even historians, they can't know all of history Whoa. as a full thing. They there's, know There's our tagline, history is an x-ray. An x-ray of history. 
Oh, let's call the episode. No, an MRI of history because you get more resolution or whatever. We don't. Oh, that's what. Oh, or we could do it. We'll talk about it in post. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Siri's freaking out at me. Siri's singing um, in your pocket, bro. So, anyways, Manifest Destiny has become starting with George W. Bush and and whatever nation building. That's the what? that's that's the word that has has sort of filled this culture idea of trying to spread your you know your culture and your and your country. Um, we do it very differently than in the past where you just like very blatantly conquer somewhere and say, you know, we own this now. Now we do it like subtly through economics and things like that. That's true. But it's the same. I think it's the same gesture. Well, it's all about influence and control. Influence and control. control. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. So you could, you could point the selfish finger at all this, but I would say behind that, you also have, um, you know, Germany, I would say, is much better to live in right now than in, you know, 1945. Fair enough. And that's because, you know, enough people on the side of good, you know, defended their their values against the other side, essentially, right? (sighs) So, I don't know. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, it's it's so easy to to get the only negative side of yes, all this history yes. without realizing we're privileged the, enough to be where we yes. are today, and all of that happened. Did it all have to happen? Yeah. Maybe there's a a, a version where n- not all that, that bad yeah. stuff had to happen, but I, it did. I, I'm so much more concerned with like where we are now and where we're going. It's like history is useful in the sense of I think it 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 humbles you and it explains things to you and it helps you identify how and why people work. But in terms of where we're going, you have to – you can apply some of those lessons, but you really have to keep in mind like, well, we, we still have to do what's best, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm sure the people uh, throughout history, they're, with a minority of, of really bad actors, most people were – trying their best to make the best decision Keanu that Reeves isn't that bad kept them alive kept their family alive age. kept society alive right have you seen the renaissance painting of Keanu Reeves oh god dude the dude doesn't age that's a that's a weird image I'm gonna I'm gonna let's I'm end go, it there I'm gonna show let's it end you. it on Keanu Reeves I'll, I'll make, let's make him the picture I'll, in this episode <laughs> but no it'll sense. say colonization part one uh yeah Keanu Reeves and and, and yeah. backwards. So we'll have a part two for you. I think we're we'll. Cover oh, our part two. We're going to cover future, what space? Yeah, future Mars. colonization. Yeah, and that's probably going to get pretty silly. Venus because, cloud cities. Yeah, I have a lot of ideas about how we can colonize the uh, solar cheese. system and beyond. Cheese will be involved. Yeah, absolutely, got to bring cheese. Space cinnamon is going to be a big one. All right, so Johnny won. So I guess they'll hear Johnny uh, giving his little hang up spiel. Yeah, good for him. He has so little to live for. Yeah. Wow, that came out way darker than I meant it to. <laughs> no, no, he needs this, so. <laughs> He's going to listen back and be like, fuck that yeah, guy. Yeah, he can go listen to this and jerk <laughs> off later and think, you know, I'm better than them. You know. Whatever he needs to do. Hey, you know. All right. Uh, All right. Last question I have. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys for uh, part two. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.